then Doctor Who punched Batman in the nads and said, take that Bruce, and then Superman came flying down and said, hey Doctor Who, I'm going to get you for that because Bruce is my friend, and then Doctor Who said, ha, ah, no, because I'm going to set my sonic screwdriver to a kryptonite setting, ha, ah, yeah, and, uh, oh, oh, hi there, hi, I'm Trej, and when I'm not writing awesome stories that I'm going to turn into films, I'm making props for those films, um, Oh, you'll stop biting my legs. Sorry. <sighs> Sorry, everybody. Yeah, okay, calm down, missus. So, as I was saying, I make props for films, and uh, this is a video about how I made a prop for a film. Welcome to the workshop. Ah, now, as I've come to do the editing on this, I've realised that although this started off as a part of a Doctor Who fan film project, that Doctor Who fan film project fell through. So uh, the reason being because we had people from the south of England and the people from the north of England and trying to get everybody to sort of, you know get together in the middle uh, proved rather difficult. So although I started working on this as part of a Doctor Who fan film project, that project got shelved. This shelf, in fact. So this is the... Uh, the uh, handheld, what did I say? Handheld sci-fi sci scanner thingy. Sci-fi sci-fi scanner thingy. So this is the device I'm going to be making in this video. Um, and yeah, although it started off as part of the Doctor Who fan film, it did get shelved and it sat there not doing anything for a while. And then I got involved in a project with Hull Council and uh, the Goodwin Trust, Yorkshire Arts Takeover, uh, called Time Fort. And that's part of a multimedia project. Uh, I'll put links below so you can actually come and have a look at this. So rather than being part of a Doctor Who fan film, it was actually part of a different project called Time Fort. And the device in the film Time Fort became known as a Mobily Scanner. You'll have to watch the film to find out why. So first of all I went to my bits box where I uh, looked for a suitable piece for the grip. Uh, so it's going to be a handheld device so I needed something that fits in the hand like this. Which uh, is from an old toy kit of the kids I believe. And then there's this little bit which is a remote control for an alarm. I think it was uh, left over from the house when we moved into the new house. It was the old alarm for the garage. And then this bit, this was uh, the glass from a uh, light to a garden light. But then we had a bonfire and the garden light got too close to the bonfire. Uh, but the, the lens, about, uh, lens, is it a lens? Uh, whatever, the glass bit, that survived. So uh, yeah, I kept hold of it because I thought I'll be able to use it for something at some point. Um, so then as usual, you you know give everything a good sanding down. Uh, so the Supergirl will, uh, will hold. Uh, I actually used two coarse of a sanding paper. Uh, you'll see in a little bit uh, left a few scratch marks but that's okay because I just gave it another sand a bit later on with uh, finer sanding to uh, sanding, finer sanding, it was actually an emery board I was going to say finer sandpaper but that's a lie it was uh, an emery board to sand it down so uh, there you go, all stuck and as you can see there you can see what I mean about all the scratches and uh, so it's me just having a test piece uh, does it look okay? I think it looks alright so I was deciding which angle to actually have it on before sawing a little hole to stick the uh, glass in uh, so I decided to go along with, along with the seams, I thought that might make it easier for the saw to actually go in and just you know, dig down, just widen that up a little bit. Uh, as it turned out that I had to dig, you know, um, dig, cut quite a... You will notice that I can't talk, I don't know what's wrong with me, my wording is broken. Uh, as you can see though, uh, it didn't quite fit, so I had to dig it out a little bit more. There's the emery board I was talking about, so use the emery board to uh, widen it, just sort of shave it down and give it a test fit, does it fit? Uh, this was about like the 10th for 10th by the time it actually did fit. Uh, as you can see though, it's uh, quite snug, but still want to give it a bit of uh, super glue. And get right in there, loads of super glue, make sure it's solid. Yeah, a bit more on the other side, why not? And then of course it all ends up dribbling out, so uh, give it a good clean. Uh, there we go anyway, it needs to fit in the hand and those things do not fit in the hand, so let's get rid of those first of all. Uh, so as I say, I think it was from a car pack, like a multi-story car pack, uh, keep all of those, it might be useful later. Part of the multi story car park, and um, yeah, so like the road went round it as a spiral, and those things were the little supports for the road. And uh, now, I wanted to have some wires, I wanted it to look like uh, whatever it is, this device, I wanted it to look like it had been modified over time, so you know, rewired and you know, 
uh, you take a wire out from here, wrap it around and stick it somewhere else. So this is why I wanted to have exposed wires on the outside. So uh, wrap it around so it fits a bit easier. And uh, that's where that's going to live forever and ever and ever. So yeah, just need uh, some way to hold it in. So first of all, make a little notch and then that's going to be where it slots in properly. Go on, get in there. You can do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah my body again. There we go. And a bit of tape just to hold it in place. Go on, get out of the way. There we are. So you hold it in place and then I've got a bit of super glue on there again. Lots of super glue in this project. Yeah, lots and lots of super glue. Lots of super glue. Yeah, a bit more. I can't have too much super glue. So yeah, that would do it for you. Oh yeah, and a bit more on there. Just keep that, down. that side bit held down as well. And um, then there's uh, just that other end there. Oh, always remember to wipe your super glue, keep the uh, nozzle clear. Always wipe your tip. And uh, so at the end of that wire I needed uh, sticking down as well. As you can see I chose to just stick that one in there. And uh, there you go, that's a general um, assembly. I think that worked out okay. So as you can see the scratches I was talking about. And uh, so I wanted uh, some other bits sticking out from the side. So on the mat down there you can see those bits are from furniture manufacturing. It's the bits that you use to stick like one panel to another panel. I don't know what they're called. Uh, if it was just a bit like a wooden peg then it would be called a dowel. But I don't think that's called a dowel. I think it's called something else. I have no idea what it is. Maybe you can tell me. Leave a comment or something. I don't know. As you can see, though, it split the uh, the seam of the actual joint, so I thought, yeah, that's not going to work. So unscrew that one and uh, widen it up a little bit. Yep. So once it's nice and snug, uh, that's all okay to go ahead. And um, then, uh, yeah. So where the, uh, the oh yeah. I forgot about that bit. So, uh, I wanted to uh, cut the things off on one side of it, but I wanted the other side of it to look like there's some kind of, uh, I don't know, radiator or antenna or something, I don't know, some kind of component. It's a sci-fi device. The great thing about sci-fi devices is you just sort of imply there's something there, then, it, you know, with people's imaginations, they actually fill in the blanks. And uh, I think that's often better than, uh, than trying to do too much detail and trying to tell everybody exactly what it is. Uh, unfortunately, it's a bit difficult to get in there with the uh, drill to uh, make, the, make the holes, so uh, that's me faffing about for ages before I finally managed to uh, gain purchase and uh, make little holes easy easy there you go and then it starts to drill faster okay so make a couple of these holes buzz 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 come on you can do it come up yep, yep, go on yep there you go yeah so we make a couple of holes so then we can uh, get the um, get the oh yeah this is where it turns out that the right you can do it nope strong man strong no nope, turn I'm not that strong uh, yeah, so this was actually a really strong wire. I'm not sure where they came from actually. I think there's some kind of like industrial staples for uh, some kind of DIY work. I don't know. Again, you tell me if you know. Uh, but uh, there we go. And ping! Hey, did you see it? Yeah, it pinged. Anyway, so that should fit slightly in there. There we go. That fits just in there. And uh, yeah, no, get it lined up. Go on. You can do it. You can do it. And it go through there. Nail it. Get it in there. No. Yeah. Ooh. You can get it, go and slot it in, slot it in. There we go, finally. Oh, and then there's the other one. But, oh no, it's not even done yet. Oh, good grief, I forgot it was this much effort. Ah, there we are, so finally get both of them in. <sighs> oh, a bit more super glue, of course. Oh, well, you can see that I knocked the wire off, actually. Gonna have to fix that one. So, a little bit of super glue up the top to put those um, dowels, did we ever decide what they're called? I'm gonna go with dowels for now, with screwy dowels screw wells and then of course obviously super glue do you have to uh, wipe up where you've dribbled everywhere <sighs> always wipe up when you dribble and then a bit more super glue up there where I've knocked that wire off there we go get that stuck back in place and uh, you know it almost looks like it's meant to be there okay perfect wipe your tip there we are now here we have a blind uh, why am I using the blind? Well, uh, it's just left over, it's going to get thrown away and then I thought, no, I'm not throwing this away and uh, because I can use it as a material to, uh, well, like this, to actually bulk up the side to fill in those gaps. So just use the, um, the clippers there just to, as a guide for where I need to do it, just for sizing up. So a little clip there on the side and then a little clip on the top. Let's get in there. Oh, and there we go, bending it out. I know it looks like it was falling, but it's actually on a a stand that has a bendy thing, bendy neck, a goose neck, I believe it was called a goose neck stand. Goose neck. Uh, so then, yeah, this is a standard Stanley knife to uh, cut it out. And then we need to make the right shape, so I'll get that lined up. Is that about right? Yeah, it's about the right size, so then just get that part there. So does that line up properly with the uh, top part there? And uh, you see, I wasn't quite happy with it. I think it sh the angle should be the other direction, so try again. 
get the angle in the other direction and uh, let's see how does that feel and uh, yep that looks a bit more natural to me so that's gonna go on there so it looks like it's actually made to fit onto it and then we need to do the other side so simply use the first one as a template line it up get your clippers as a guide clip it to clip clip clop it to clop clop I suppose now that's stupid shut up trash okay as you can see perfectly lined up and then I was thinking hmm something's not right here oh the curve should be the other way around oh! okay so get another piece and try again this time with the curve the correct way around <sighs> okay clip it to clip go ahead there we are then the I'm gonna have to cut the long bit there we go so now I've got the two sides and uh, oh, lift up the gooseneck there we are, so, go on then, get the super glue out again, and then ready for the uh, assembly of the side pieces. So there we are, just need the glue down the sides, plenty of glue, we need to make sure it soaks in properly, and then uh, down the other side as well. Go on, yep, that's it, a bit fiddly. Amazingly, I did not super glue my hand to the other side while I was trying to glue this side. I know what you're thinking, why don't I just let the glue set? Well, because I'm impatient, that's why. So then glue down this side as well, and then wipe off where you've dribbled everywhere. <sighs> so there we go, just need to hold it now for about three hours while it dries. You know what's really annoying though, is I found out later I actually have some super glue accelerant to one side, and I was uh, holding this for absolutely ages for no reason at all. Anyway, there we go, a bit more glue just for those bits, I want to uh, seal those edges there. Don't have any gaps. Yeah, just keep that going. The yeah, drawers that you can see to the side there, my wife painted those some time back. It was uh, just a little project that she was doing, and it was while I was holding this in place, um, I was thinking, you know what, I really could do with a vice. Oh, wait, I've got a vice. Why am I holding it with my hands? So I popped it in the vice. Okay, and then drill the little holes and, and screw in some things. Right, okay, so the reason I'm doing this is purely aesthetic, uh, purely cosmetic. Uh, I just want it to look like it's been screwed on, like uh, it's got a you know control panel that's been screwed onto some kind of power pack or something like that. And then again, a bit of super glue to hold it into place. And then that's pretty much final assembly uh, complete, I believe. Quick once over, and um, oh no, just to tidy up. So, this is where, as I say, I uh, went over around with a knife, get rid of all those edges, and then also uh, around with the emery board just to sand off all the, uh, the final bits and make it a good going over, make sure it gets rid of all those scratches and uh, stuff. Okay, and uh, now I'm ready for painting. So, I'm using tin foil to mask off some of these wires and pointy out bits. It's very versatile this tin foil, you can use it for all kinds of things like this. There we go, get all wrapped around. Yeah, so it's very good for uh, masking irregular shapes like this. Obviously if you're just doing like a square then you can use uh, masking tape, uh, oh, like this. So mask off the, uh, the lens as it's going to be on the actual uh, sci-fi device. So in the film it's going to be a... Uh, or the lens, or actually it's a screen, it's a screen and a lens, it's also, it's, it's multifunctional. Give it a good spray, so I've got a base coat of um, silver metallic there. So that's just, uh, so, well obviously to make it look like it's metal. Uh, I want it to look like it's metal underneath and then I'm going to mask off areas of, uh, well I'm going to put paint on so it looks like it's been painted a different colour, but I want it to have the metal showing through from underneath. So I put the metal base coat down so then I can paint over the top, but first of all I need to mask off the areas I want to remain metal. So the sticky out bits, which to me are antennae, uh, even though it's a, what do I call it, a screwed owl, is that what decided it is? And then we've got the uh, liquid masking film. Now this is really good stuff for masking off edges and things that you want to uh, remain silver, so it looks like when it's completed it will, uh, it looks like the paint's actually been chipped off. Now the other way of doing it obviously is to just paint it the colour that you want it to be painted, and then uh, you can go around with like silver paint to uh, paint over where it's supposed to be scratched off and so on or just a, a silver sharpie or that kind of thing. Uh, however, doing it this way around, when you actually apply the, uh, the coat of paint over the top of it, it leaves uh, an edge, it leaves texture so you can actually see that it is actually paint that's peeled off. 
So that's why I decided to use this technique. Uh, I haven't actually used it on something this small before though, so this is me just uh, experimenting really, so uh, leaving trace marks because I didn't know how, just how fine it would actually, um, uh, uh, you know, allow to actually peel off afterwards. So there's a, a nice big blob, and again, just trying to like spread it out a little bit so it doesn't look like just a blob. You know, it looks like it's actually been scratched. And a hair dryer to, uh, to make it, yeah, it was dry, obviously. Uh, oh yeah. Why am I not talking? Wording not working. Okay, so we had to pick a colour, and uh, my cohort decided upon red. So yes, yeah, that's my mate. Uh, so what colour we have in this? I say my mate, my cohort, the guy I'm working on the filming with, uh, Jed, who actually does the music for this, uh, uh, the majority of the music for this. Uh, he does my main theme, and then it's the Phantom Raygun that's actually doing the, uh, the, the piece of music that's underneath. Now, so you can see peeling off all the masking, and um, this is when I could see that actually uh, the paint that was used, uh, I don't know if it's because of the temperature, Spray paint can be really, really funny with the temperature, but uh, yeah, I think it's because it was cold uh, when I sprayed, it didn't quite set right, and you can see it's all rubbing off my fingers there, which is a little bit annoying. Now, I don't know if it was the red or the actual uh, silver undercoat. Now, I believe the silver undercoat was actually a cheaper paint, so it's probably that, to be perfectly honest. But uh, yeah, you can see, you're just sort of taking off all the masking. I do enjoy uh, demasking uh, a thing, and then, uh, oh, obviously the, uh, the liquid latex sort of taking off that as well. So this is what I mean about, you can see that the, uh, where it's all peeling off, exposing the metal underneath, but you can see at the edges it leaves that little bit of texture, and your eye just picks up that little bit of texture and just makes it look like a, you know, genuine um, peeled off paint, which it is peeled off paint, it's just obviously done it deliberately, but it's, it's artificial genuine peeled off paint. Arty genuine? Uh, okay, so I kind of like that texture though, where it's gone like that. So where the two paints have reacted together and it's gone all bumpy on top, I actually really like that. It makes it look like it's just like old and decaying. So uh, anyway, yeah, not so happy about being all over my hands, though. But uh, I figure that when I give, the, give it the ink wash, though, uh, uh, to you know deepen the, the recesses, that it'll probably uh, smooth that out a little bit as well. Anyway, so just carrying on getting a bit more of the, the latex off there. Um, there we go. Nice big bit there. So that's why obviously it still looks like it's been knocked on on the raised areas, and you know over time it's been used. Uh, and then oh yeah, you need to get the tweezers to get into all the small parts. So just looking at that one, you know I was quite pleased with how that turned out. And you know, I didn't really have a plan to start; we were just sort of making it up as I went along. And I just let a little bit where the bit of paint and super glue obviously uh, got into the lens. Uh, so Agrax Earth Shade. I don't even know if this is a paint uh, or ink wash. That's uh, or wash even. I don't think it's even ink wash. But you know what I mean. I don't know if this wash is even still going. You probably still pick it up somewhere though. Uh, Citadel seems to change the paints every couple of months. So, uh, so yeah, I've got this one. Uh, just picked this up from a local hobby store, and uh, yeah, just give it a good solid wash. Don't bother watering it down or anything. Just get right in there and uh, back in the vice to hold that, so I don't like get the, the wash all over my fingers. And uh, yeah, just give it the. Uh, Hair dryer to uh, dry things off. Get the wash to dry quicker. Okay, and then uh, there we can see uh, it's pretty much dried. So you can see where it's just sort of collected in some of the uh, the areas there. But it's nearly done. See, I like it where it's gone like that because it looks like it's just sort of oil that's built up on it over the time, over the time, over time. But uh, don't worry about the little bits where it's pulled. If you don't want it to pull like that, then you can uh, cover it up with a little bit of paint. So here for the metallic area, I'm using Mithril Silver. Any metallic paint will do. So just give it a good shake. Oh, <sighs> nobody saw that, okay? Nobody saw that. Any metallic paint will do. Just giving it a good shake because it's kind of old. So uh, just give it a little bit of a watered down and obviously test it on the back of your hand for consistency. And uh, yeah, just go over with the... Uh, picking up some of the highlights. I like Mithril Silver because it's very shiny and uh, that's why I went with that one so I just go over the edges so just uh, where this is a highlight just picks out those and uh, just uh, yeah go all the way around. Anyway you can see some of the exposed metal just go over the edges and uh, there we are there we are on those edges there we are yes That's basically it done. Uh, if you want, you can go around and uh, go over the painted areas as well. So I did think about like where it's pulled, pulled. Um, I did think about actually going over with a bit of red paint to fill that in, but I thought, no, no, I do actually like it. I like that it looks dirty. I like it looks grubby. I like that it looks like it's got oil that's built up and scum and grime over time. Uh, yeah, so 
So I decided to leave that. And uh, you know what? I thought, yeah. Yeah, I reckon that's about done. And uh, ready for filming with. That's how we made the mobile scanner. Yes, and we used that in the film, didn't we? Yes, we used that in the film Time Thoughts, didn't we? Yes, we did. Yes, so I was quite pleased with how that turned out in the end. And I don't know what you find so delicious. And yes, okay, good grief. Okay, yes, I love you very much too. Okay, good. <laughs> okay, so you know the drill. Hit like and subscribe. <laughs> Uh, and if you have any ideas of things, something I could build next, drop a suggestion in the comments. Ah! Okay, now, time for the gallery. Okay.